So this is the remodel. It's complete. And this is the hole and the mount where the access point is. And if I go up this ladder here, oh, I actually um, punched down a, uh, a keystone jack up here so I can just connect a short cable to the access point and tuck it up in there. It may not be the ideal place, but I didn't want to really crimp a... I mean, I just had an extra connector to be honest, and I didn't have any ends to crimp the uh, direct end to the cable, so I just crimped a keystone jack on the end, thread the cable up through this hole here, and then mount the access point. And I'll show you the access point. So here I have the uh, access point. And you see the short cable I was talking about. So I just leave this connected and thread it up through that little hole you see you saw. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using Tomato uh, USB as firmware on the ASUS router that we have set up. And I'm gonna be resetting this and configuring it with the software that comes with the the access point. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the access point itself by pressing that button, and then I'm gonna be configuring the access point wireless and channels and password and whatnot with the software and uh, I will continue the video once it's complete. So here is the access point. Mom, making video. So here's the access point. Uh, as you can see, the light is blinking yellow, which means that the access point itself is actually not provisioned. So what we're going to do is use software on our computer to go ahead and configure it. As you can see, I'm writing down information. I'm going to put the access point on channel 11 and then the ASUS router here on channel 5. And I'm going to make it N only. And then on, the, on another note, this is the networking closet. As you can see, I've patched all the most of the ports. And then here is the power over Ethernet adapter. Right now, it's connected directly to the the access point for obvious reasons. But this is going to be then connected to the uh, which port is it? Uh, this one, port number 10, which is actually the ceiling port in the living room. So here is the Unify software on my MacBook. As you can see, it's running actually in a browser. It's its own web web server. <clears throat> so we go ahead and hit next. Because the access point is actually not provisioned, it's going to show up here. It's waiting to be configured. If you don't see it here, disable your firewall on your computer. It might be blocking the web server or the communication ports that the software uses to communicate with the access point. Um, and also, if this doesn't show up, you'll see an error message or a suggestion to connect the access point to the same layer two or switch device, which is what I mentioned in the previous video. Once you configure it, however, you don't need to have it on the same switch, I believe. Either way, to avoid problems with configuring the access point, you want it on the same wired network. And it will even tell you here, but with this reset here, you should be good. I mean, I can disconnect it, uh, disconnect the access point, and I'll show that message again. But just trust me, it says you need to be on the same layer two switch or layer two hardware device. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next, and then, um, we're going to input the SSID. And then the security key. I'm going to have to block that out. I do not want to enable guest access. The admin name is admin. Arbitrary, really. We'll go ahead and configure that. 
Ups. All right, so it's going to confirm. I want to confirm the configuration. <coughs> All right. Typing in my password. All right, sorry, I'm ghettoing it. Um, so this is kind of interesting. You can upload or yeah, uh, save your house blueprints. And you can just, I think, drag where the access point is. So living room, I think here, just arbitrarily. All right, so then we hit the, this, as you can see, it's provisioning and it should eventually become fully provisioned after the configuration is saved. So I'll go ahead and continue the video once it's done. All right, continuing on, it says connected now. And you can see there's information regarding the access point itself. So what I'm going to do actually is configure the specifics. I'm just going to look through here because I honestly don't remember uh, where some things are. All right, alias, don't really want to set that. Channel, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 11 because I'm going to be running multiple access points. Or the uh, AC's router is going to be technically an access point as well, and I want to have the same SSID. So you need to separate the two access points by as many channels as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and channel, put channel 11 on the access point itself, and then channel 5 <clears throat> on the uh, on the uh, ASUS access point. Transmit power. <laughs> and I believe this is uh, channel width. So if you're in a high, highly congested um, area where there's a lot of access points, so if you're in an apartment building, or a condo complex, there's a lot of access points everywhere. You want to narrow the channel down, um, I think, because it's a little, it's a little, it allows you to get better reception. But I think a wider channel, I honestly don't know the benefit. I'm not going to try to pretend I do. <laughs> but if you're in a highly congested network, I believe you want to have uh, a 20 channel width, megahertz channel width, so there's less overlap. Okay, so right now it's producing a the SSID I set through the software. It's automatically automatically configured. Do not want to do the forget. So, all right. So this is mainly what I want. Channel eleven. Make sure I apply it. Settings saved, and then um, I think I don't need to restart it, but why not restart? All right. <clears throat> so this is kind of the enterprise aspect going over the enterprise features. You can have multiple access points associated with the network and use a single computer like this MacBook to configure all of them. Whenever an access point is configured through the software or provisioned, it's going to automatically produce the SSID you configure and all the necessary settings. I'm not sure if it's smart enough to change the channels. It says auto. I'm assuming software is capable of determining which access point is operating at what channel and you know, uh, adjust them accordingly. But just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to force a explicit channel. So I don't know if this is actually going to come back up. It should. I'm going to close it. It's probably still rebooting. All right, let's go back and see what the access point is doing. The thing that we want to, I forgot to set is N only. All our devices in our household are all N capable anyway. Anything that isn't is going to be hardwired in. So I think I can save it here. And then once the software sees it pop up again, it's going to go ahead and push the settings to the access point. It still says disconnected, so I'm not sure. There's a way to refresh. To make sure it's, okay, there we go. So there's a refresh button up here. Now the access point is live again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and verify the configuration. Provisioning, I guess it's now that it sees the <clears throat> access point.
Just gonna make sure the settings are all saved. All right, so that's done, and I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the ASUS configuration, running Tomato USB again. So go to the basic. I'm gonna go ahead and verify the settings here. So right now it's operating on channel 11. I wanna to go to five because the access point is occupying the 11th channel. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. You wanna make sure the security is exactly the same on the access point and the router slash access point that you're using. So WP8C personal <coughs> with AES encryption. And the shared key is the same as, as well. So it literally has to be the same exact thing minus the channel. Everything the same, but the channel. So once you hit save on there, it should be reconfiguring itself. So that's about it. I'll go ahead and test it a little bit and make sure I'm getting good reception throughout the house. Um, but this is just kind of a basic overview on how to set up a multi-access point network in your home. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. is installed as you can see the green light indicates that it's active and has a gateway to connect to if it doesn't have a gateway it's gonna stay green but it's gonna blink occasionally <clears throat> but if it's a steady green and it's producing the wireless network that you configured you should be good to go you know zoom out or step down as you can see it's a pretty clean installation kind of non obtrusive you can turn off the light too through the software if it's a little too annoying. There you go. That's the Enterprise Access Point by Ubiquity installed in a home.